Welcome to our review on LDRs and thermistors. So we've already had a look to see what resistance is and how it's caused. But now what we're going to do is have a look at a couple of components that actually are versions of resistors. So the first one we're going to consider is something called a thermistor. Now what we find with a thermistor is that the resistance of it is going to change as the temperature changes. So the reason it can do this is because it's made of a material like silicon, which is known as a semiconductor. Now, what that means is that any of the electrons present within the atoms of the semiconductor itself don't require a large amount of energy to escape. So as soon as those electrons escape, they form a current. So what we actually find here is that with our thermistor, as the temperature then changes, then we're going to see different amounts of electrons being released and therefore different amounts of current. At the bottom left, you can see the little circuit symbol for it. So just remember that you do need to know those circuit symbols, either to be able to draw a diagram or to be able to recognize them from one you're given in a question. So when we actually heat up our thermistor, what happens is the electrons within those atoms of the semiconductor gain enough energy to actually escape from them. So what we find then is we've got more electrons that are delocalized and therefore the resistance is going to drop. So that leads to an increase in our current. So the kind of graph that we can get is in the bottom left there. So you can see you've got temperature along your bottom X axis and then the resistance on the vertical Y axis. So what we can see is as the temperature increases, then the resistance decreases. Just go careful not to draw it as a straight line. It is a curved line if you're asked to draw that. So what we actually find then is if we look at this at the same potential difference, so if we keep the potential difference the same, then at low temperatures, we've only got a very small current flowing because there's only a very small amount of electrons that have been released from our semiconductor. So that means we have a very high resistance. If we then have a look at a high temperature, what we've got is a very high current because lots of electrons have been knocked out of the semiconductor and therefore we have a low resistance. The second component we're going to look at is what's called an LDR or light dependent resistor. Now this one is going to have different resistance with light intensity changes. So again it's made of a semiconductor and in this case the light actually causes electrons to be released. So the greater the amount of light the more electrons are released. So you can see the actual component in the bottom left and its circuit symbol which again you need to be able to recognize and draw in the exam. So we've got our little graph here. Again, on the x-axis, we can see our light level in kilolux. And then on the y-axis, we've got our resistance. So we get the same shape. It's that curved graph decreasing as we go further along our light level. Now, what that actually shows is the fact that as the light intensity increases, then the resistance is decreasing. And the reason for that is that as our light intensity increases, more electrons are released from the semiconductor's atoms and therefore more current is able to flow because our resistance has decreased. Now one handy bit of equipment that we can actually use when looking at circuits as a whole is something called a multimeter. Now digital multimeters are really popular when you go into DIY shops and so on and they're just a useful thing to have around the house to be honest because what they can actually do is they can measure the current, the potential difference and the resistance. All you need to do is just twist the little dial to represent the correct things. And obviously make sure that you're connecting into the right terminals at the bottom there. But we can use that one piece of equipment then to measure three different values, which is obviously a very useful thing to have.